the end of the Second World War, unlike the end of the First World War, where uh, there was a need to find alternative employment for the staff, the, the government could see that uh, there's a need to keep the factory going, building other things, building aircraft, building all sorts of other things. Uh, so one of the major projects that started, actually started during, uh, towards the end of, of the Second World War, was a, a very large airliner that could fly non-stop from the UK to America and it, that was the Bristol Brabazon. Uh, so work started at Filton around about 1946. They built a massive hangar, three bay hangar, the largest of its kind in the world and they also extended the runway. Uh, they built an 8,000 foot runway. Sadly they demolished an entire village to do this, which you wouldn't get away with that now. Uh, so they built the, uh, this Bristol Brabazon airliner. There was only one built and it took off from Filton in 1949. Well, Filton, uh, the factory here, uh, was in the forefront of engine technology. They were building the uh, Olympus engine, one of the most powerful engines in the world. And in the, in the late 1950s, the government set up a committee to look into supersonic transport. And a variety of companies in the UK put forward bids uh, for a, a supersonic aircraft. Uh, but in the early 1960s, the Bristol factory was, was chosen out of all these factories to put, put together a, a, a formal design for a supersonic aircraft. The, the government realised, around about 1962, the government realised that uh, going out alone to build a supersonic air aircraft was going to be very expensive. So they went into partnership with uh, Sud Aviation in France. Uh, so this ultimately resulted in Concorde being produced. Although Concorde is very close to the original Bristol design. It also uses the Olympus engines which were designed at Filton as well. There was a lot of excitement around. Uh, everybody knew. It, it wasn't really kept secret or anything like that. Uh, so people could hear, the, you know, residents around here would hear the, the engines being run up. So, you know, you couldn't really keep it quiet. And everybody was very proud of, of, uh, of what was going on here. And when the first flight of Concorde was made from Filton in 1969, there were crowds uh, all around the airfield watching it take off.